Hello, animation fans, and welcome to another iAnimate podcast. Happy New Year 2021. Um, this is our 81st podcast. I'm your host, Larry Vasquez, my other host, my buddy, Rick Arroyo. How you doing? I'm doing really good. It is 2021, right? Yes, Just yeah. Making sure. <laughs> 20, 2020 was crazy. <laughs> now we're, we're off to 2021. We're going we're gonna to do it right. Trust That's me. right. That's right. We've got a great guest in this podcast, Kyle Kinsworthy. Um, very active online. It's kind of one of the things we talk about in the podcast and just really appreciate, um, you know, he's one of our instructors. He's been in the animation industry for over 15 years. Um, he's a principal animator over at Shell Games and has worked on some really, really cool projects. And uh, as I mentioned, just uh, very active online. So it's just always neat to see guys like that in, who are love this craft, doing it for this amount of time and even just even on their own personal stuff. So uh, very cool podcast, Kyle Kinsworth. Um, yeah. you have any Notes for us before we jump in? Yes. Uh, just to remind everyone, it is a new year. You got to think about what you're going to achieve this year. So, and really quickly, I just want to remind everyone, if you're looking to improve your demo reel or you want help to create the right shot to help you, you know, get noticed and, and you know, really get into the industry or improve your career, you want to become a lead or assistant director or director one day, um, that we're here and that, uh, you know, we help our students get to that level, you know, that that is you know, what the industry is really expecting. And um, also to remind all everyone that hasn't been to iAnimate, when you do join iAnimate, you have access to your uh, instructor's lectures, all the past lectures that they have done. And depending on which group you're in, you will also have access to all the other instructor's lecture. So that's something really neat. And I think, uh, you know, students were asking like, can I watch other instructors yeah. in lectures and stuff? I was like, absolutely. You know, yep. if you're in, uh, you know, if you're in feature workshop four, well, feature workshop four, all the way up to, to one, you can watch all the lectures, same thing for games, same thing for creatures. So. And one so, of the yeah. things that we didn't get to do too much of last year, but last year was our 10 year anniversary. And so they've oh, got, we've yeah. got a decade, literally a decade yeah. of stuff in our vault of past instructors. And so, yeah. um, so for those that are new, uh, we do all of our classes live, but we record them, uh, as yeah. well. So you're able to watch them later and uh, it's just, a. a mind of and treasure trove of animation yeah. lectures and, and stuff so exactly anytime you want you can watch it you can re-watch it you go watch the class that was done you know 10 years ago is right. go watch the class was done yesterday uh you know when when you're available and that you have access to to your instructor right the you know they're amazing instructors so yep. yeah it's, 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 we're lucky very yeah very, absolutely very lucky. yeah yeah absolutely so January 2021, new year. Um, we'd love to have you join us. Um, and as you'll see from Kyle, this is one of our, our instructors as well. And you can kind of get a flavor of the passion that our instructors have for this uh, craft and helping our students grow. So yeah, All ready right. to jump in it? Yeah, let's do it. Let's go. All right, you guys ready to jump into it? Let's do yeah. it. All right. All right, Kyle. Well, um, first off, we always thank our guests. It's always a neat opportunity to get you guys in on these podcasts, pick your brain, talk about animation. Uh, that's why people are here and listening to it. So uh, we do appreciate your time, though. Oh, yeah, no problem. Very cool. Now, you're on the East Coast, Pennsylvania area? Yep, Pittsburgh. Okay, all right, all right. Now, I noticed on your bio that you studied that in Phoenix. Is yep. that where you grew up? No, I'm originally from a small town in Kansas. Okay. Uh, like, uh, yeah, small town in Kansas. That's kind of where I was going with that a little bit, because mm -hmm. even when I saw the Phoenix, I know there's not a whole lot of animation, you know, there per se. And so you, you come from a small town area. How did you get, you know, interested in animation and what was your vein into the industry? Yeah, so I've been interested in like movies from a really young age and like, I guess, super young, you know, middle school even, I wanted to be a director. And okay. like, that was my dream. And as time went on and like movies coming out, like Jurassic Park and Toy Story, I'm like, wait, what's this? Like, what's this? What's this? What's the, what's going on here? And I started learning more about how they're made. And I was also really interested in computers. And I'm like, wait a minute, like animator, I like using computers. You're sort of a director. I got to direct <laughs> this character and decide what they do. This sounds great. Um, so I, I decided to, to go to art school. Um, and Phoenix is where I ended up because the only art school that I could that was around the area was Kansas city. And I did kind of want to like go somewhere new and experience a new place. So Phoenix, I was like, Hey, I'll be on the West West coast. That's where probably a lot of the jobs are. Um, ended up, I went East though, but uh, yeah, I was in Phoenix and, uh, and it was a great experience. 
And I did, uh, I, there's a couple of studios there at the time, um, like Cheyenne Mountain was there, but I didn't get in there. Um, but I interned at a 2D animation studio and that's kind of was my first step into, into animation was actually 2D uh, and then got hired uh, on the East Coast. Yeah. Did they teach you 2D at the uh, school in Arizona? Okay, so that's how you started getting into that. Okay. Yeah, it was sort of an all around program where they oh, gotcha. teach, uh, we learned Max first and you learned how to model and rig and then Maya and then a little bit of everything. And it was kind of on you to really focus what you wanted to do. And like, I knew I wanted to be animated. So like, if I wasn't in school doing these other assignments, I was home animating, you know, busting, busting my butt, trying to get, trying to get a good reel. You know? Now, was there any reason why they went in 2D when you're learning, you know, 3D Studio Max and learning to kind of the pipeline per se? I think it, I think they just wanted to just help encompass and like teach, you know, how it was done. So then when you jump into Maya, cool. uh, you know, you, you kind of get a sense of, you know, the oh, oh, a different workflow, I guess you could say. Gotcha. How it translates now to yeah. 3D. Yeah. yeah. Very cool. So very generalistic uh, education in that regards. Okay. Yep. Yep. A little bit of everything, which, you know, I did like because you got to dabble in a lot of different things and then it's kind of you to then specialize. But I kind of knew going in like animation was my thing. Um, right. I wanted to do, you know, even back when I was younger, like I do stop motion with video <laughs> camera oh, and like yeah. speed, you know, speed of bike sliding around the, the carpet. <laughs> so I, was, I was always interested in making things move. I guess. Yeah. And one of the things we've actually talked about on this podcast before is it, it is um, nice to know the other particular parts of the pipeline. So you can yeah. talk about that. You can converse with other people in, in uh, the uh, not only industry, but in your departments and stuff. Yeah, for sure. Like understanding, you know, what, what the rigors role is and what, how concept artists even work. And, you know, just having that, that kind of well-roundedness can really help, you know, understand their time. And like, if you have an idea to get a sense of maybe how, how that could impact other departments, which right. I know production always appreciates and they always appreciate that as well. Um, and, and it's just going to be helpful for communication in general. It's just kind of getting the sense of what other people do. Cause you don't just sit at your desk and, you know, and have a tunnel vision and work all day. Like it is a very, I guess, uh, collaborative experience, like, you know, working in a studio. And, and that's something I mentioned like to the students as well. And I try to make my class collaborative as well, where, you know, we even have brainstorm sessions sometimes in my classes. To oh yeah. So you do brainstorm sessions with yeah. your students. Yeah. Like, like if you would do it at the studio, like yeah. right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's, like, great. that's cool. I'll bring yeah. up, I'll bring up like a, just a blank page, like a whiteboard. And, it, you know, one of the last ones we did was uh, we were doing transitions of like, uh, you know, getting in a car, getting out of the car. And we just had a long brainstorm of like, let's come up as many as we can just to help people start thinking about how many are really in games and like what's some creative ones we can think about and, you know, kind of, you know, come up with oh, the ideas. Oh, yeah. And do you like, I th like, all right, I'm going to jump in because yeah, that really excites me. And I think that is something that's really unique that, uh, that we do and, and that you do that. And I, I'm, I'm really, I'm crazy about, but do you, cause we tell students when they come to animate, they're also going to learn to work with a director. And like, yeah. if you're in a studio, do you, do you assign them? Like after you go through all the ideas, are students assigned a shot? Like you were at the studio, like, okay. You know, obviously students want to work on the piece they want to, but you kind of like saying, well, you know, I think you should do this. This would be great for your reel. Like, like do you assign shots? And uh, yeah, I, I don't assign, like we do the brainstorm and then I ask them that they need to pitch me the one they want to do and they, mm -hmm. they do need to get it approved. So it is sort of still collaborative, yeah, yeah. but you know, I, I, if, if, if I don't think it's the right shot for that student, then I will push them to a different one. So just like, so you have to, sometimes you get to pitch your idea. Yeah. The director mm -hmm. has to look at it and they're yeah. like, well, yeah. you know, <laughs> not, yeah. or yeah, like, oh, that's really awesome. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. And you can build upon it. That's a great yeah. relationship. Mm -hmm. Like, and you do that. I mean, cause you know, when, when you're a student, you start off, you know, I remember when I was, I was super shy, you know, in my little corner, yeah. like, how do they feel about that? Like, you know. It, it, it does, you start your some, class. some jump in a lot more than others, but yeah. I think even the others that maybe aren't as involved, they're learning a lot. Like, you know, they're trying to get to experience or I'm trying to show them this experience that really goes on in studios. And that's, yeah, that's something yeah. I, I talked at the very beginning of my class. I'm like, this is, this is a job. Like it says it's a class, but I'm going to treat this like a job. Like I'm yeah. your, I'm your soup and I will, you know, I'm going to give you notes, but you, you can push back if you, if you have a reason you did something and we can have that conversation But at the end of the day, like, Everything I'm doing is to get the best shots out of, out of yeah, industry ready. That, I, that's, that's exactly right. Right, right, right in the moment. I got yeah. a big smile now. Like, that's right. 
<laughs> and, I and I also I'm like, even like, because we do sometimes remote contract hires where I work. Yes. And I'm like, I will go to my students usually first, right? Because yeah, past oh, yeah. students, because I know they can, they can do the work. Like I've already had that experience. So not yes. only is this a class, like this is an interview, right? Or this could be your first step into the industry, right? right? right. Small industry. And like, so this is a yeah. great opportunity. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. That's killer. I, mean, I, I have hired, I mean, we have uh, at Ubisoft, there's past two, I haven't been teaching in a while, in a while at, at iAnimate. And I, would try to hire all my students because yeah. I was like, to even that right now, the project I'm working on now, I have, you know, students from my animate. I'm like, this student would fit really great here. And I'm, yeah, I would try to bring them in. So that's amazing. Yeah. I, I yeah. like that industry ready. That's, that's a, a great thing. You know, I had a, uh, someone inquire about iAnimate and kind of going back and forth via email and kind of asking these questions. I'm like, okay, well, these are how they're set up and they're set up for these reasons. I said, it's very much like a dailies, you know, in a studio mm -hmm. or something along that lines. Mm -hmm. And so we're, we're, it's a neat opportunity because we're teaching animation, but we're also getting them ready for when they actually get into the uh, yeah. industry, you know, or if yeah. they're in the industry there or they're making transition from games to feature or feature to games or something like that, they've got, they're a little bit more ready. It's a little more comfortable. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. And like the feedback is like a session is perfect for that. Cause you know, there's, I don't think there's been a shot in the history of time that got final the first time I was looking at it. Yeah. Like, yeah. Understanding, yeah. Uh, understanding that that's going to happen. You're going to get notes. It's normal, right? And like, yes. you, you work through them and you know, it makes your shot better. And, you know. That was actually a big uh, turning point for me was just realizing going into, you know, your, your reviews and going, okay, what notes do you have for me? Versus mm -hmm. thinking, okay, I got this. I, you know, I nailed this here. And then you're like, yeah. Oh, yeah. man, I, you know, it's going in what notes you have. And it's much easier to be more and more receptive in that. Because yeah. you yeah. know, you're like you said, you know, you're going to get notes. So, yeah. Yeah. Do, you find yeah. your, do you guys find yourself now, right? And I think this is really interesting, right? When we consider ourselves, uh, you know, when we were, you know, younger animators or students, we were scared of the notes. But do you mm -hmm. find yourself like, I can't wait to find what notes I'm going to get that's going to make this better. Because now, exactly yep. now with this, like, you know, I have a, uh, when I have a senior team, th they will come, they would want notes, right? I'll be in yeah. the hallway and they'd be like, hey, I really want you to come and check this out. I, yeah. need, I need your eye. I want to know what, what can we do more? And I'm like, I, well, I, I got another meeting, you know, but <laughs> do you find you're in that mindset now? Because I think our students come out of the fear and they go into, I want notes. I want, cause they know that's the improvement, their yeah. mindset change. So. Yeah, no, I'm not, I'm the same. Like, you know, it's, it's always great to, to, to get good notes. And like, I've worked on some projects with some like great animators and getting notes from them is like, almost like, you know, yeah, yeah. I want to hear what they have to say. Like, uh, so yeah, it, it's definitely great. Uh, and you know, I, I usually think there's like two different types and sometimes of, of, or at least how I give notes too. There's like creative and then there's technical and yes. of mm -hmm. like the idea notes and then the, the oh, arcs and epops and ease ends and stuff. And, and sometimes the creative ones can be hard to get. Like if I really am jazzed about an idea and then they're like, <laughs> no, we need to go a different way. Sometimes <laughs> you can get attached, but in the end, you know, it, it's for the service of whatever the project is and if it's going to make it better. You know, yeah, yeah. I'm all about it. Or we're all about trying it too. If someone has an idea of like, yeah, maybe try that. And then, you know, try it. Because often you may feel like, oh, no, that's a dumb idea. But you try it and you're like, oh, that was actually great. You know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so true. Mm -hmm. so yeah, true. very much so. Very cool. Now, how did you get from Arizona then to East Coast then? Yeah, so um, while I was in school, um, I had a couple opportunities, which was really nice. I, I got to work on a movie when I was in school. It was a documentary um, about quantum physics, but it had animation in it. And I got on as like additional animation and layout, but it really helped to have that like on my resume. Very cool. And, mm -hmm. and while in school is where I also interned at the 2D studio. It's a 2D animation studio called Fat Cat. Um, okay. And so Don Blue's studio, Fox Animation was in Phoenix. And when it closed, a lot of the folks there formed Fat Cat. Nice. And they had just finished working on the Curious George movie. And I got on an internship there in the ink and paint department. So I wasn't getting to animate, but I get to go frame by frame every day. <laughs> these awesome animations. And, you know, so I'm still learning a lot. Um, so that was a great experience. And then lucky, uh, I was lucky, not the, the way it goes for everyone, but I got hired right out of school about a week or two after I graduated. Mm -hmm. um, I'd been flying all over the place and I heard back from Shell Games um, yeah. in Pittsburgh and they were 
working on a really cool project. I can't say what it was, but it was with Pixar. I can say that. So like, right <laughs> out of school, I'm going to be working on a project with Pixar, like with supervising animator at Pixar. And I'm like, yes, I will do that. Do that. <laughs> uh, yeah, why not? yeah, of course. Yeah. And, <laughs> sure. and then that was like my real education, I'd say, is that project of like the notes from them and like everything I've learned during that time. And, and I've stayed here since I've been here 15 years. Um, just, we do a lot of weird projects. Every project's different. And it's, I just wonder like, what's going to be next? What's going to be next? So you're ne you never get comfortable. Always, always learning. Always. always yeah. Learning. I that's love that. like, yeah. And so, yeah, we do a lot of, we'll do interactive exhibits, and VR, theme park attractions, mm -hmm. um, you know, all sorts of different hardware. So really is like every project is something completely new. And, and, and so that's why I like that aspect of it where you can't get comfortable, but that's good. Right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. If you're, yeah. if you're a little terrified at the start of every project, that's good. You there you know, go. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Make I sure like you're that. always on top. Yeah. I like yeah. that. Yeah. <laughs> Now, did you have any uh, 2D background or artistic background be beforehand? I, I could draw like, a little okay. bit, um, but I wasn't great. Um, art has kind of been in my family. Like my grandma was a painter and my older brother is also an artist in the game industry, a concept artist. So Very cool. I grew up around art, yeah. but I, I couldn't draw great. And so that was one of the reasons I'm like, oh yeah, computer animation. <laughs> uh, since I, you know, I don't have to draw as much, um, but I guess, yeah. There was art it kind of in my family. Um, yeah. So it wasn't too difficult transitioning into uh, technical, more technical with uh, you know, computer software and things like that. No, because I was interested in that stuff growing up, like the computers and stuff. If anything, it, it was, I was a little terrified that I got like that 2D internship because I wasn't like a great animator. <laughs> and I did want, like the goal was always 3D. Um, like that was my, that was my passion. Um, I didn't know if I would be games or films, but I was, interested in both and you know so I, I wasn't like i have to work in movies or i have to only work in games like i i wanted to be an animator so that was that was my goal now do you remember anything in particular that was kind of those aha moments or light bulb moments when you mentioned you were working with the uh team there at pixar was there anything because mm. that you said that was kind of more of my education and training there yeah what like, were some of the things that as a, an early artist that you were like you know makes sense yeah. So a big one, it was like, so still then I was early, like was workflow. And I was like on this quest to like find the perfect workflow. And I would always ask like, oh, are you stepped? Are you spline? Are you pose to pose? And like some awesome animator would be like, oh yeah, no, I'm stepped and pose to pose. I'm like, that's it then. Like their animations are great. That's what I'm going to yeah. do. And then you and get another that way for a while. And then I would <laughs> yeah. get a third shot and I'm like, wait a minute, this isn't working. And I finally, the light bulb was like, just change your workflow per shot and like, that's, that's yeah. my <laughs> workflow like, what is the shot how do i do it what workflow is best maybe it is straight ahead maybe it's layered maybe it's so uh, that's something i tell my students a lot too like they that perfect workflow isn't out there that's like, right you got to find what works for you and that's what works for me is just changing it changing per shot yeah adapting to the shot i, yeah. I think that yeah. i i think that's amazing because like Honestly, you know, I take it for granted, you know, it's like, how do you do a shot? It's like, yeah. oh, you just do it, you just know, it. it's whatever, it, whatever the, the situation is in yeah. front of you, you will have the answer, you know, like, mm -hmm. oh, yeah, we'll just, you know, just straight ahead it, you know, yeah. or it's like, just, yeah, just, you know, do a layer, just grab the, you know, grab the cog or just grab the, yeah. the, the body mass, move it around, get the timing or, or just like, oh, find the key poses, find the golden poses, right? And don't put more than three, <laughs> you know, like this one, this one, this one. So to make sure the story is clear. And, but we don't realize it until, you know, until you get to, you know, teach or you have to like, you know, show others how it's done. So I think that's, that's amazing that you just use any workflow or you just look at it as, as a challenge. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Cause like, yeah, maybe you're animating a car or ship. I'm like, well, what's, what's the key poses on that? Great <laughs> ahead that or later. <laughs> <laughs> any, uh, many types of shots particularly call for something for you? Like if you were to get, you know, a, a crazy action shot, is that something you'd more straight ahead or would you time those out depending on, you know, that way I know I need to be here on my marker by that time or how, what yeah, makes you determine your workflow? Yeah. Usually like, because again, that shell, we do a lot of stuff. So if I have to do like dialogue or acting, that's usually always like pose to pose. Mm -hmm. But action shots, I usually do a, a, a straight ahead pass with like a simple dummy object, like a cube, or often I'll quickly model, if it is a character, a simpler rig that just has like three controls, four controls, and essentially try to take the final with that simple rig to yeah, get yeah. the timing and get the flow yeah, yeah. of the shot. 
and then I can show that and get it approved. And Crazy. then I can go in. And, and, so it's know, almost like you do a, like uh, a previous work yeah. of your shot, mm-hmm. right? But yep. you bring the previous work with uh, a, a general timing and feel and idea yeah. behind it. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. It's similar to kind of like a, a gesture for like drawing. Like if you can sell yeah. it, you know, with a 60 second gesture, if you keep drawing, it's going to get better. So if yeah. I can get by off in this simple animation, then I'll be like, it'll only get better. That's yeah. yeah, very cool. Very cool. Now you mentioned one of the projects you worked on over there. It was that the, um, was you said that was shell that you got yeah. in with, but that was pretty quick after, um, leaving Phoenix, right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah and right that's where you've been I, since. I, yeah. I've been there, for man. Now. That's great. I'm on year 15. Year awesome. Very cool. That's very oh. neat. So yep. now, um, you mentioned, uh, we talked a little bit beforehand that, uh, until you fall was a VR project. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. That was the last one that I've been on that I can talk about was the lead animator. Um, and so it's a VR like sword fighting game. Um, so it's in, and it's sort of a bit, a bit like you can kind of think about like Beat Saber or something where it's timed, but you okay. have to time like your blocks as you're fighting like another combatant. And then, you know, you swing in your openings and stuff. So definitely a fun animation project to be on. So a very cool. Sword. Yeah. I tried VR before is the first time actually at CTN. Um, mm-hmm. Some of the uh, more story driven ones, uh, Crow, um, I forget the one was from Disney. And it was, this is the first time. It's just very, very neat. Well, this last Christmas here, um, we had someone who came over and they had the um, Oculus uh, and I got to try actually some of the games. <laughs> it was, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> absolutely amazing. Oh, yeah. I got headsets all over. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, it was just, um, yeah, just very, very cool. I, I've not done VR with a game before and it was very, uh, very interesting. <laughs> But yeah, yeah, really enjoyed it. Anybody who put it on was like, this is amazing. So how did you enjoy it? Had you had much experience in VR beforehand? Did you, and obviously animating in that world is, is different. Yeah, yeah. Uh, talk a yeah, little we about have that. Like, we, we've done quite a few VR games. Okay. Well. Um, so we did have ex- experience doing it. Um, but it does take time, especially for animation. because There's not a lot of like, oh, this is the things you need to think about now that you're in VR. Yeah. Uh, so a lot of it was learning over time. And, and a lot of them, is like the player is the camera, right? Mm-hmm. Like they look where they want to, or like if you're playing a console game or something, often the camera can you know, be where you want, you put it behind the character, you kind of know the view you're gonna see. So it is a lot of, that's a lot of level design of trying to get the player to look in the right spot at the right time. But then also in terms of just what the polish on the animation, like so for the fighting game, like you're fighting someone, most of the time are like waist up with you. Mm-hmm. You know, you can look at their whole body, but you're not going to watch their feet when you're sword fighting someone. So you kind of, I kind of plan out where I'm going to polish and work my way out more time, like on the upper body and the head and less on the feet. Um, uh, Did you guys have a uh, different quota for VR? In terms of like how long or like shots? Yeah. Yeah. Per, per week versus a normal. Uh, no, it, this one, this one, is about the same okay. for like a for like a combat game um and again like certain certain animations i'll tag of like how often you see them and then they will get more work done versus you know some one-off ones you know um, if it's not like an important cinematic moment less polish and that's something i do when i'm like just being like a a, a supervisor there uh when I am like creating the animation list, I'm, I'll tag or I'll do a rough estimate of how long we should be spending on certain ones. Gotcha. That's something, you know, I talk with the students about, like, you know, when you're in school or in class, you don't want to on a shop for a couple of weeks, but like, it's not that way in the industry. Right. But it is, it does like change how long you can work on them. Like some are hero shots or some are, you know, quick one-off ones, but you know, usually not working on them for multiple weeks. So, so I have been on projects where I did work on one for like six months so that's <laughs> <which it was. laughs> okay so okay so when uh just to bring that back yeah, yeah. to the to the budgeting right yeah so I, I think that's really important and i uh, you know we mentioned this in in a few podcasts you know it's like it's great that uh you know student will be able to do an animation that's what we remind our students to continue to grow continue to to learn and and practice you can't do an animation once and say that you're you're great at it. But yeah. talking about budgeting, um, in your reviews, because I think it's great that our students get to come and see their their. I, you know, all of you guys, I call you guys directors. It just makes 
it just makes sense, right? Because that's what you guys are the supervisors and directors. Um, do you go, uh, do you hand them like deadlines or expectations of where their shots should be? And like, because I mean, they get to see you every week, you know, twice a week, which gives a lot of feedback. There's a lot of learnings. But do they know like, hey, technically I should, if I was in the studio, I should be at this point or, or done? Uh, yeah, how, yeah, how do you work in your workshop? Yeah, definitely. I, it is per week. It's not just turn in wherever you're at. It's a yeah. specific goal. So like, you know, week one, maybe I want your layout and I want all your reference. And week two could be, I want your blocking pass done. And then week three, clean up the polish. So it is similar to a studio as well. Um, yeah. Because like at a studio, I want to see those steps too. Like, I don't want you to take a shot to final and show me because I may not like the idea at all, right? Like, so you <laughs> got to get by off a different point. So I try to yeah. create the same vibe in the class, right? That's great. I used to be the animator that would bring a shot to final and then show it. Uh, no, <laughs> no I, I'm no yeah. joke. Yeah. You know, I know it's embarrassing to say, and Larry's uh, laughing uh, at me. It's like, really, Rick? <laughs> no, <laughs> but like, I understand. Shame. You wanted to like, change look, afterwards. Like, look how awesome it looks. Oh, no, it was a great it. learning yeah. lesson. Yeah. I was, yeah, it was like, look at this. And then, yeah. you know, it would be like, wow. They're like, like, wow, you know, cool. But, <laughs> but <laughs> and, yeah. and then I was so attached, yeah. you know. I had to rip it off like a bandaid. I was like, oh, like, I'm going to have to redo it. Like, and it was like, I just, you know, I stayed all night because I was really into yeah. it, but I put all my time and energy. I didn't, I wasn't really, uh, you know, I didn't play it smart. I didn't, yeah. you know, go in calculated and making sure that I took the right steps. I just went in gun blazing. Yeah. yeah. And then I was like, look at it. And I'm like, yeah, <laughs> great. But that's, that's not what we want now. Yeah. yeah. So <laughs> I love that you, that you constantly do a lot, like, you know, you're doing dailies with your students, which yeah. is really, it's amazing. Yeah. And then something I do in my class too, is I have a discord for the class as well. So they can post their work in there and I can often take a quick look or the students can take quick looks and kind of give each other notes. Um, I do have the caveat with those two categories of like, you can give each other the technical notes, but you save the creative ones yeah. for me because you don't have <laughs> multiple directors. Um, yeah, yeah, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. There's, there's no, <laughs> there's yeah. no multiple directors. That doesn't work. <laughs> right. <laughs> and you've got the experience. Like you said, you've been there for 15 years. You've been, you know, that's, that's the important part was when they're taking the workshop with you, with you directors. Um, yeah. That's, part of what they're paying for is that experience that you guys are mm -hmm. able to bring um, mm -hmm. that, that level that you guys have been through this already. So. Yeah, for sure. Sure. Yeah. Cause that's like, my goal is like, I want, I want them to get hired or if they're, if that's their goal or if their goal is to, to get advanced, if they already have a job, mm -hmm. like I just want, I want you to succeed you know, right. in my class. So I will do all I can help them do that. Yeah. It's, it's a great relationship that I think we have with, with our students, right? The, the fact that we, we talk to them and we share our personal experience, our, you know, the things that we learn and, and all the tips and tricks and even what kind of like we know is coming in the, in the future, you know, yeah. I'm like, I'm excited about the, uh, you know, two years ago, I said, there's going to be some change in the industry. And obviously there's a lot of change in the world, but the industry is really growing and, and uh, there's, there's something even more happening that I'm really excited about. And I think that the fact that they get to talk to, to, uh, you know, an artist like yourself and, and learn from you is like, it's gold. Oh. <laughs> you know, it's, just gold. Yeah. <laughs> it's awesome. Yeah. Did you find you had to be a little more technical with the VR or was it similar in regards to the, the pipeline as far as you're in as an animation animator or director? It's pretty, it's pretty similar. Um, some of the projects that involve characters can be a bit more technical. Again, since the player is the camera, like, you know, if you need a character to be alive in VR, you know, you need eye contact, you want them to follow you, which you have that in other games as well. But now that it's a physical space that you can walk around and maybe move around a character, then it, it can get a bit more technical. But overall, the pipeline's pretty much the same. Um, I haven't found myself like overly change you know, in terms of the animation. How and I what, a, the what about the creative process? Like, I, like, you know, because it's VR, right? And, you know, mm -hmm. you always think about the camera. What about your, your, your preparation or your, your referencing or your, like, do you still do a lot of that because you're doing VR? Or, like, how do you approach it? Is it similar to what you teach in, in class? Or Yeah, it's similar because I'm a huge re reference person. Um, so mm -hmm. I, I do that, like, if I can, I'll film reference myself. If I can physically do it, if not, I try to find it. And that's something uh, I definitely teach in my class too. And I show ways how to go about finding it or the best ways to do it or how to film it yourself. Um, but yeah, like for, for both that, the Until You Fall and then the previous, the the Star Wars uh, one, which was a 
augmented reality one, not a virtual reality. Mm. Um, I tried to film and do all the things myself because um, that's helpful too. Because even though I'm like this, you know, lead animator, there's a director on the project. I can again show them my reference and be like, "This is what I'm thinking about for this attack." Before I even get into Maya, I can get buy off on stuff, you know, um, which is always helpful. Um, which is kind of what you're saying, Richard. I think uh, uh, the longer you go in your career, like the earlier I like start getting buy off. Where like I was probably <laughs> similar. I would try to make something look pretty. Before, yeah, pretty. Yeah, and yeah, now like right. here's my reference. Here's me swinging a sword. Like that's what I'm gonna do. Like, yeah, try the, it. The, yeah, yeah. Um, the planning is key, right? Like, mm -hmm. and I'm a like, um, you know, for um, I'm just making sure I. I I can say the project. I can't say the project, but um, I just I had, I had a moment there. I was like, I can say it, don't get in trouble. Ubisoft, I love you guys. Careful, careful. Yeah, yeah. But um, even like, you know, if uh, if there's a project and, uh, you know, I I do a lot of reference and I will talk with the, the creative director and I'll be like, and I will show the creative director, this is where we're going to take the whole department and teams. Like, this is the idea. Like, so, yeah. you know, it, even, you know, when I was an animator, I would show the director, but I'm showing the creative director, here is the big pitch. Here is yeah. the, the character development. Mm -hmm. Here's whatever the cinematic. Here's the, the you know, the E3, whatever, or marketing. This is the idea. D does the team, like, does, you know, the creative director and 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 whoever, the the stakeholders, or we, we call it the, the fellowship of directors, like, do we all agree that this is fits in the realm? Yes. And then that literally just goes down to 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 downstream to teams. Yeah. yeah downstream yeah. and any any uh any uh you know assistant or, or directors or realization directors anyone can literally take that and say that is my foundation they know where yeah. to start from so yeah, planning is is everything for right. me like because it, it, it costs a lot of money to make games <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> and if you're gonna put your name somewhere you want to make sure that that expenditure is is, is within the, that <laughs> Yeah, and even in like the the course of a project, it's like probably my favorite time, like that pre-production planning, especially if you can get on as an animator. Like, there's all similar. Like, I'll create like animation style guides. You can do some animation tests, so then when other animators can see like this is what we're going for, or here's like character write-ups and stuff. Like, it is a fun time. It can be kind of exploratory, so I do like that. That's a fun part of the process. Do you find that students have a tough time with that aspect of animation, the prep? Um, I, th I think in a, again, I even did two like early on, like, yeah, you that's why in. I asked you that. Wanna, yeah. You want to jump in, just jump in. Huh? <laughs> and that's what I did too, like early in my career, right? Like I just, I want to start moving controllers. Yeah. Like, oh, I know how to do that. I've seen someone jump up in the air and do a backflip. I know how to do that, you know, but no, I don't, you know, you just do your reference, the more planning, <laughs> the more reference you get, like the better your shot will always be. And, like that's, that's what I told you. Totally. And even know, and even know what the, like the reference is for, right? Because, you know, we say, okay, we're using reference so lightly. Now, oh, now yeah. I'm getting into that, 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 you oh, yeah. know, the old, old rig, like, Hey, reference is reference, but it's how you use it and yeah. knowing why you're using it. Right. Yeah. And, and if you're taking reference just to copy, well, then you're not being artistical. You know, you're just, yeah. you're just, you know, you're just using reference, but you know, reference helps find an idea and understand what you're trying to get from it. And mm -hmm. I, and I know that, you know, even when I, I mean, I, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm still a student, right? I'm a student for life. But yeah. when I was a young student, like I knew I had, you know, I was like, oh, I had the idea and then I'll go in and I literally, you know, it was that point where my reference and, and my animation were like one in the same. But yeah. so it was like, was I really being creative or was I just really being structured and having, you know, I did find a solid process. Be careful. There's a dangerous dog. Ah. You. Um, <laughs> but I, I think that's great that we, that uh, students realize that they can rely on your judgment and help. You can help them understand what, what makes great reference and how to use Usable. Great reference. Yep. Yeah, yeah. And not just copying. Cause now you see a lot of gray animations, but if you ask for the reference, it's one for one. Yeah. Yeah. There, it's like, yep. there is, there is no difference, which it's okay at times, but sometimes you need to, you know, think about it. Yeah. And that's something, again, kind of back to my workflow and something I tell the students. I definitely, there's a point in a shot, maybe it's a third of the way through. I get rid of my reference and I'll look at it again. Yeah. Like, just not have it be there anymore. I used it for yep. whatever I needed. Maybe it was timing. Maybe I needed to get the key poses to get the mechanics right. Whatever reason I needed it, I tried to not look at it again. As I yeah. move forward, allow yourself to make some changes or get creative, like you said. And don't rely on it too much because yeah. right? yeah. then you can find the uniqueness that, ah, that, yeah. that essence that makes it unique ah, yep. within whatever the performance the, the the moment or the the experience ah, right yeah 
And yeah, sometimes you'll find like little happy accidents. You'll try something. And if you had that reference of the whole time, you may not have tried something or experimented with, you know, a different idea. Yeah. So you can find a lot of magic, you know, by not having that up all the time. Yeah. 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 Right. Sweet. Now, um, so you, after, uh, until you fall, that's when you jumped into Jedi challenges. Is that correct? The Star Wars one? The, the Star Wars one was actually before that. Um, okay. Yep. It was, it's a augmented reality game. So on your phone and they sold this headset and you slide your phone into it and uh, yeah, a series of like three games. There was like the star Wars chess that they like play on the millennium Falcon. Mm. It was a real time strategy. And then there was a lightsaber battle game. Like that was the portion that shell worked on. And I was the lead animator on that. Yeah. It was an awesome project. Cause I guess I'm a pretty big star Wars fan. So getting to animate, <laughs> aren't we all? Aren't yeah. We all, yeah, exactly. Right? <laughs> Getting the anime Star Wars character. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Ubisoft just announced the, you know, the, oh. the Star Wars games and and I like, that. <laughs> like it, it's just I'm like, perfect. Yeah, so it was, watch out, here we come. <laughs> so it was a new challenge for like until you fall was like an original IP. Um, so it's a lot of like create the character. Now this was like you know you gotta match the character. Like it's gotta feel like Darth Vader. It's gotta feel you know yeah. like Darth Maul. So a lot of like what makes those characters them. And like planning and figuring that out so then you can animate them and have them feel like them. Yeah. There's a lot of learning. What do you find is like, you know, when you have a character that's already established, right? You have Vader, mm -hmm. like he moves in a very unique way, right? Yeah. I call him like the 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 cylinder, right? Mm -hmm. Not cylinder, the 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 pillars. Uh, yeah, he's like he's a block, right? He's <laughs> he's like he's a block and he comes in and then you know yeah. it's just so forceful, but mm -hmm. he's not rushed, it's just yeah pure strength yeah just comes and oh god i love him you know it's just like he's just terrifying you know i just like yeah. oh, like oh my god it's such a dream i wish he was my best friend you know, <laughs> you know? <laughs> but like the, uh, what was like kind of the um what are the the learnings you think or the things that um uh, that you learned that you could share with our audience today with, or something like the challenges of taking on a character that was already established right oh yeah i mean it's definitely super tricky you know, you watch tons of reference and then you start trying to find uh, repeating patterns that make sense yes, of like, formula, like yeah. Kylo Ren, for example, has a lot. And like the first movie, you'll see characters do like lightsaber flourishes and stuff. Yeah. But if you like really pay attention, he always does the same one. And it's right. like pretty cool. Maybe Adam Driver decided like, this is my lightsaber flourish. It's the one I'm going to do. But like paying attention and finding those repeating patterns and characters and you can drop them in your shot. And then, you know, as a, as a player or a viewer, you watch it, you're like, oh, wait, that does kind of feel like that. Um, nice. And then, and then uh, another, I guess, good story from that is, uh, so we worked on two, like, two versions of the game. We did, like, the original where you're a good guy, you're Jedi, you fight all the bad guys. Um, and then they wanted to do an update because The Last Jedi was coming out. And they're like, oh, we want to do an expansion. There's these new characters in it. It's the red Praetorian guards. And they're like, we want to fight them. And they're yeah. like, okay, yeah, that's awesome. And we're like, well, what do they look like? Or how do they move? And like, whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> the movie's not out yet. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you got to give me something. You got to give me something. Yeah, um, yeah. So they got, I got to get flown to Lucasfilm and watch like that throne room fight scene at Lucasfilm before awesome. the movie came out. Yeah, they so. didn't send it to you. They're like, no, no, you're <laughs> here. You got to go there. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. And yeah. sign a hundred papers. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The brick. The brick. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. So, it's it's cheaper for us to fly you out. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I'm like, sure, I'll go to Lucasfilm. I'll watch some of the Star Wars. For, for sure. <laughs> but it was a challenge, though, because, like, they can't send to us. It can't record it, obviously. So I'm like, just, they. it was about an hour we got to watch that scene. And it was just per shot. And we just let each shot loop. And I'm just staring at it, like, trying to, like, do those <laughs> notes of, like, yeah. what makes Take, it die. Yeah, um, write notes. And yeah. so what were, like, what were the things? Sorry, this is gold right here. Watch this, right? Those so what were, what, how did you categorize, uh, how did you categorize and break down the character, right? Mm -hmm. So I have I have a method in, in mm -hmm. the ways that I work at UB and which becomes a, 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 like it could become a master list or a master formula yeah. to de define characters so they're all different, Yeah. right? But what were your things that you would like, like how did you break down a character? Yeah. Like, yeah, yes, the, that, that's for... I try to do it. The first thing I try to do is whoever the character it is, Darth Vader or these praying guards, three descriptive words that include mm -hmm. just mm -hmm. three. Right? Yeah. No more than that. And um, you got to and you got to take time and you got to like what are the three perfect words that like yeah. describe, you know, Darth Maul or Darth Vader. And you start there. 
Because then when you give another anime the shot, I can always be like, remember these three words. Like, <laughs> be, like Kylo Ren, he needs to be angry. He needs to be kind of wild and, you know, whatever, powerful, right? Yeah. And then you're working on a shot. You need to be keeping these in mind. If you do a shot, not any of those, then it's not that character then, right? Like, yeah, yeah. to have some of those in there. That's where I start. And then for like Star Wars, since they, you know, IP that's already there, then I start getting into some mechanics of how they move or like yeah. posture. How yeah. they like, you know, they all have lightsabers, how they like holding the lightsaber, um, you know, and then just keep going then from mechanics to then, you know, more personality and, you know, specific things that they do. And you just kind of create this little character Bible that, yeah. but uh, yeah, the three words is where I usually start. I'm so happy you said that because I'm <laughs> doing a lot of, uh, a lot of coaching and, and uh, Jen is one of um, the, the, the animators at Ubisoft. And that was one thing I was like, you have three words to define a character and there's a and there's a, a video that i that we have that i i share and literally it's just like the, those three words and characters are not allowed to share keywords because yeah. mm -hmm. it, it, it belongs to them that's yeah. it once that word is chosen the other characters can't use yeah. it yeah, yeah to another project you know so <laughs> this way it's super clear and i love how you talk about posture mm -hmm. you know yeah, do yeah. you define uh, when you do you define also within the posture? Because uh, you know, there's um, okay, I'll share. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I saw okay, so I have uh, and, I, and this is overly simplifying, but a character can be um, you know, aggressive where yeah. he's really just like always leaning forward, always in, in, in the motion of taking space. Uh, attacking, if you will. Then there's the neutral, where the character is, you know, more balanced and more has more options and whatnot. And then there's the character that is, that is, towards the back where their weight is a little bit more. So, you know, they're they're harder to reach, uh, and and they're more opportunists, right? So they can block, they can do this, you know, so they can yeah. dodge and then counter. So it's very calculated. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, that was super simplified in in yeah. terms of, but. <laughs> Do you do the same thing when you're like, uh, or do you have sim similar methods in, in structuring your character? Similar, yeah. Like the posture, it's not even, I guess some of it's like how they fight and stuff too. Like, like, and again, when we did this one, only the Star Wars game, only Force Awakens that came out. So yeah. like for Kylo Ren example, like he didn't have good posture. Like he would be more hunched, hunched over yeah. when he's yeah. fighting. And so it's making sure that we, you need to keep that feel if he's moving around, if he's attacking, if he starts standing up and having really proper posture, he's just not going to feel like, like the model and the rig yeah. will look right, but it yeah. won't feel like him. Um, so it's, it's sort of a uh, kind of like the blueprint of like how the character stands. Yeah. And you can start building. You know, Wonderful. That, that's which that's cool. something else uh, we do in our, uh, that I teach as well is, you know, before you even start animating, you get the idle pose, right. And come up with a couple options, right. Like how's that character stand? Yeah. Don't just put the arms down at their side. <laughs> it, yeah, it makes <laughs> such a difference, right? The yeah. fact I think I meant the students that get that time to to really understand. We're quickly talking about it, and I know, yeah. and I will definitely will continue on. But yeah. the fact that they get to it is so important because you know uh, all last last year was a, a big year. Uh, you know, working on multiple different projects, and a lot of these things came was repeating like each character has was very unique right whether yeah. it's on rainbow six or whether it's on watchdog or whether it's on something else like these these things were key and if a character would change like no time out that is not the character yeah go back change change go you know look at the shape of the pose look at the character look at the height look at the, the speed everything and it was very you know every game also every game has its own own um cinematography and whatnot but like it's really important to maintain and respect the character throughout a project oh right, yeah throughout sure. the game yeah and, and luckily on the star wars one lucasfilm has like a department they call qa but it's for it's for the film and character oh yeah, and yeah making yeah. sure that they are on model even when they're moving so they shots and animation would get passed through them as well and they yeah. would often have notes about like mm, that swing isn't quite darth vader yeah, or yeah, that, yeah. that that pose here could be a little tweak so they always had eyes on that type of stuff as well, which was helpful. Yeah. But oh, yeah, you got to do your work as well. So then they don't get a shot. Like, what is so, this? yeah, <laughs> you have to do your work so you can. And this is uh, my and now, Larry, I'm sorry to. No, uh, this is great. Much, but it's as an animator, it is your job to make sure that you understand the character and you respect the character yeah. to 
to show the director that you are prepared and that you could take on the task, right? Yeah, sure. And the fact that you are teaching these students, like you're not just going to animate to animate, you're going to learn to become a professional animator or like a really industry ready top level animator is yeah. that you think before you animate. And, and to me, hearing all this is like, it's just, wow. Like that's, that is literally what I talk all the time. It's like, do you understand the character? Do you even know who the character is? Right. Yeah. You, like, you know, do you know why the character gets up every day and does these things? You got to know your character. And yeah. same thing with actors, you know, cause you know, they're, you know, a lot of actors acting. So I think this to me is like, so satisfying. And back to like the brainstorm, another one I do is to help them come up with a unique character. So we do like three different column brainstorms. So one is physical traits. So maybe it's a limp, it's an injury, uh, yeah. whatever, a scar, uh, and then emotional states and Man. then profession. And I'm like, let's brainstorm a whole pile and then pick one of each. And that's your character you animate for this next oh, show. Right? That's great. Oh, oh man, I'm yeah. so jealous with, from the studio. <laughs> 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 that's fantastic. But it really helps your shot. Like if you go in just with a rig, it, it can be intimidating, right? Just here's this character. I don't know anything about them. I don't know who they are. If you spend some time, like give a bit of a backstory, you know, think about how they stand, the posture, that type of stuff makes animating a lot easier like doing that prep work like you yeah. kind of have a blueprint where you need to go right? absolutely yeah yeah one of the things uh, kyle i've got to mention um that i appreciate that you do is you're very active online with your own personal stuff yeah um i, I think that's fantastic because i know obviously with you being in that, in that position at your work you've got you know limited time but you're still mm -hmm pushing yourself you're still enjoying the the craft and the art form can you talk a little bit about that what makes you motivated to do that kind of stuff yeah like i mean the high levels i love to animate um and the personal stuff i do usually always stems from something i haven't done or maybe something i haven't done in a while or like like one of the ones i did last year like the the walkman reload animation yeah i, mean, I don't do a lot of first person animation I'm like, I gotcha. want to do first person animation or, you know, it, it could be a different one or, you know, but it's usually something to push me of like, I haven't done this or, you know, maybe it's a rig or a character that I, I haven't, I haven't worked with that one that looked like that before a character that looked like that. I want to do that. Um, in terms of how I do it, um, my tip because a lot of people ask, like, how do you get all that time to do it? Don't do it at the end of your day because I never want to keep working. <laughs> of course, the end of the day, I want to stop working. Do it at the beginning. Like wake up a little earlier and start work a little earlier. And you need small chunks. Like a lot of the ones I do, it's 30 minutes at a time. Very but cool. If you do that five days a week, you know, that's two, three hours. Yeah, and yeah. Over, over two, three weeks, you got a new shot. You know, so. That's fantastic. Dude, dude, Larry, Larry, guys, I don't know if this is coincidence, uh, but – um, you know, uh, at the beginning of the year, you know, there's certain animators and, and, and artists that I work with, audio actors and, and you know, animators. And one thing we do is, uh, you know, we talk about resolution and your go the goals and yeah. being, you know, getting disciplined. And one thing uh, I was talking with Jen is like, all right, we made a schedule and she would wake up early to get me time because she's like, it's hard to animate at night. Yeah. I was like, yeah, but why you animate at night? If you, you should, if you know. You have to learn to pick yourself. You learn have to learn to to motivate yourself and and choose, like if you really want, you got to get up and take time for yourself, right? Mm -hmm. Some people go to the gym and some people, you know, they they do what they need to do so they can get a nice animation. So now she's been getting up early. She she would get up and uh, she's actually now taking uh, Alexi's class on top of the training that we do. Wow. Uh, yeah, she's so dedicated. It's amazing. And she's really good. I'm really happy. As, as you can see, but she just wakes <laughs> up. She just wakes up, you know, like she'll wake up at like, I think she, if I remember, she told me yesterday, like she'll wake up at 530 to have breakfast, like 530 to 630. And then her class is at seven. And oh, wow. so, so, you know, twice a week at seven to, to whatever time she would, you know, either learn or mm -hmm. she would be animating or, you know, doing reference and whatever. She's just there. And that the fact that you just said the same thing. Yeah. I'm like, <laughs> ah, this is good. I'm teaching the right things. Still. So this, is, <laughs> this is good. Uh, Here's a mime. <laughs> <laughs> 
you know, one of the things I love about that you said too, is just, you know, I don't know if you guys have heard that old adage, how do you eat an elephant? And it's, you know, mm -hmm. one bite at a time. Right. Yeah. yeah. And it's the same thing that you're talking about there. It's like, you know, you're talking about getting up at like, you know, like two in the morning, you know, I got to get this, you go, cause what's going to happen after a bit, you're going to burn out. You're going to, yeah. it's little by little, just those, those little doing something extra, but it's little by little, you know? And yeah. so I really like that you pointed that out too. Yeah. It's a journey, yeah, like, right? Having yeah. little goals too, of like, oh, I got 30 minutes. I'm going to fix this one thing. Mm -hmm. shot. And maybe I even get it done quicker and you know, I can stop. But like, you know, having little goals to, to work towards, because that's something I guess I found you at work, you know, early on, I just animate, animate, animate all day. Right. Like I have huge chunks to animate, but right. then, you know, I get more meetings, more of this and that. Those <laughs> chunks got smaller. So like having those little goals, kind of it was, it was important to like you know you can sit down and animate for 30 minutes i know that sometimes sounds crazy i'm like oh no i need six hours you can get something done in 30 minutes. right it, it makes you faster too eh yeah mm -hmm, for sure. yeah because you, you have no choice a little yeah. more focused uh. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah because you're like i have 30 minutes right this is like what like, can i get done in this time yeah, yeah you look at it and you're like okay i gotta fix this <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that's all you do it's like ding, 30 minutes and then you get like oh i gotta you know log online because we're all working remote now and yeah. like, <laughs> next, uh, you know, start my day. So, yeah. And, and another thing I like about the personal stuff is a lot of what we do is client work. So in the end, I'm animating for a client. So I get to be the client on these. So I'm making all the decisions, which that can be fun as well. So, yeah. 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 Now, did you do the uh, Psalmist uh, Metroid one, didn't you too? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. That yeah. One was a lot of fun too. Nice close yeah. up, um, mm -hmm. kind of intense yeah. Uh, dialogue too so i can see where you're talking about hey i did a first person shooter or first person with the mm -hmm. uh, uh cassette. cassette and then you yeah. jump into something else here that's got kind of a yeah. a dialogue close yeah. up intense you know so very every, different. every workshop you're doing a new animation with the students yeah yeah mm -hmm. oh yeah i do that as well yeah is uh big part of like what i want them to see but as i mentioned i have multiple workflows so like i want to demo them Show. Ah. here's how i didn't make this um very cool yeah, the last one i did another close-up dialogue shot because i'm like hey if i do a full body dialogue shot it's different than when i do a close-up one and then i kind of showed this is my workflow for that killer kind of talk about you know how how that goes because you know i know like my class specifically is you know uh it's, it's game workshop one we're not doing dialogue stuff but like a lot of studios you may have to do character talking you may have to do this or that so, so you squeeze it in you just yeah, yeah. Yeah, so, so it's different. it's not the same as a feature, the feature quality stuff yeah. that we would do, but giving you that uh, like that base foundations. Like if you need to do, I mean, in games, we, you know, a lot some stuff is automated. Sometimes yeah. you know a lot of procedural stuff. So, but we still have to do a baseline facial stuff, and yeah. even with the marketing stuff that we do, yeah. uh, it's like just basic facial animation expressions. You know, so it's important, even though you're doing game stuff, but you might get, hey, I got to do this really small, short, you know, like, hey, Charlie, let's go. You know, yeah. <laughs> that, was, that was my best acting. I think I deserve an award. Yeah. Yeah, I, give me an award, someone like a little, yeah. <laughs> a little, a little trophy. Yeah, it's like your, it's your like animators toolkit, right? With the yeah. more skills I keep throwing in there, you know, and that I can teach the students about too. You never know. You may be out of place and they be, hey, like, we need a marketing render who, you know, who wants to make that? And if you're like, Oh, I know how to post a face. I know how to do that. Yeah. And or something yeah. crazy, some crazy project comes up. And, you know, the more that you practice dabbled in different things, the more prepared you can be. Yeah. And I know we've had a, a podcast with uh, Casey McDermott um, mm -hmm. over at Blizzard where he was in different departments at different times. Yeah. Some of it was, sometimes it was in game, sometimes it was uh, cinematics and stuff. So it may be jumping from one department to another where you're utilizing these different skill sets. So yeah, and it's definitely how it is like at Shell where I work. Like I've been on projects that are pre-rendered, right? Like it's where it's essentially a movie. And then I've been on others that are VR and some that are, you know, uh, animated and actually like an animatronic with robots of like that type of stuff. So you could get in at a studio where it's not just the standard. And, yeah. Uh, you, know, you may have to be jumping around. Uh, yeah. But that's why I love it. <laughs> no, very cool. Yeah. I just, that was one of the things I just really appreciated from you is just that, that little extra that you kind of keep doing. And, um, and like you said, it's, it's, you wanted to get into animation, regardless if it was feature, regardless if it was games. And with these little projects that you're kind of doing too on your own, you're fulfilling that whole kind of gambit there, you know? Yeah, yeah. First person shooter to uh, up close dialogue, you know? Yeah, yeah. I can, I can animate whatever I want, yeah. Yeah. Dinosaurs, robots, <laughs> like, yeah, there's personal stuff that's up to me. Um, yeah. 
Yeah. Very cool. And often, like sometimes, I, I have a slew of them back to back because it's you know I'm taking a shower, I'm walking the dog, and like sometimes an idea will pop in your head. I'm like, oh, that's a good one. Like I should start working on that. You know, just the animation brain's always 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 Yeah, it's hard to turn it off. Yeah. <laughs> anything in particular you're excited about? I know Rick's kind of mentioned just the the future for gaming. Is there anything that you're particularly excited about in regards to the field? Oh, hmm. like back to, you know, my original, like I have a big love for movies. Like it does seem like games and movies, like they're oh, yes. becoming so much more cinematic. And like, yeah. I think that's why you, a lot of animators are going back and forth between games and films because they're, they're starting to blend. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So you like see a lot more of it. Yeah. yeah. So oh, like yeah. camera work in games and like creating that cinematic feel, like it's good now, but I feel it's only going to keep getting better. Mm. Yeah. Oh, and yeah, I think started. there's a big there's a there's a want of that of like that cinematic experience that I'm playing, not watching. Right? Totally, I think you like you said it right. The the blend is even happening even more. Um, you know, uh, and I I'm, I high like I like highly recommend animators really learn how to to animate at feature quality because yeah. there is the line is just getting closer. Yeah, and. Feature animators, you know, just to be aware of how how game animators work, because everything now, you know, more and more studios having animators work in a game engine. Yeah. Right. Now we're, we're no longer just call it a game engine. They're just going to call it an engine. Right. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, there is big projects, you know, that, you know, in, in, you know, uh, yeah, you know, there's big projects. I can't say. That uh, fudge, fudge. Rick always has to filter yeah. through. He's like, okay. yeah, oh, man. I'm like, yeah, but it's really cool, big project that it's feature work or, or yeah. feature work or Netflix work, and there you go. They're using a game engine, yeah, so yeah, the yeah. feature animators are get like working directly inside the engine, yeah. And game animators are being, you know, seeing that you can really push it at a, such a cinematic, as you say, cinematic quality yeah. that the performance really matters. And we've seen it in some games, um, you know, and now the animators that are doing games really understand like, hey, it's no longer just about body mechanics. It's about, it's about a full on fledged performance yeah. and a believable performance yeah. and a rememberable performance that makes you come back. And I think... I Everyone needs to really like me. Game animators, you definitely need to uh, learn more about acting and performance. Mm -hmm. And feature animators really need to know how to get right into to the core of it and make these things happen in engine and quicker and more efficient and more effectively and probably tighter deadlines. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know? yeah. So yeah. 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 Even like when I when I started, you know, at the beginning of my career, it was like a big difference. Of like, oh, yeah. you're a game animator simple rigs like you can't even have a facial rig or maybe yeah. no twist bones yeah, yeah. Or something. just eyes and, and a jaw but like they're getting so much more complicated and you know and like you said feature level and i think it's only going to continue until eventually like they're it's the same right like yeah. you can back at the same and that that is that is exciting i think yeah. it's exciting for every animator like so many great projects are happening like no matter what class you take you take a game or feature you can use those skills yeah. in, in today's industry right now yeah. and, and it is key like you know they're asking for a lot of animators with the right skill set not just mm -hmm. one skill set but the right skill sets yeah. and i think yeah. that you're teaching that the fact that you you're adding more into your workshops and, and they get to watch all your recording that's why i think it's so cool that yeah. Anyone that joins uh, iAnimate, they could watch your recordings that you did last block and, you know, start with you, but still look at the stuff uh, done Previous, before yeah. and other instructors mm -hmm. too, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I, mean, I, watched, so, yeah. I watched the other instructor stuff. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was that's trying a, to learn something new, right? Yeah. There we that's go. That's fantastic. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. And one thing I also do with the students is I have like a, a spreadsheet. It just says, like, what do you want to learn? And just anytime... Put, put it in there. You want to, you want to know how I would animate a creature. You want to know how I do a, a quadruped walk cycle, put it in there. I'll try to fit in, even if it's a five minute discussion about me talking about it. That's, That's great. That is I want, amazing. I want to give them all they oh, can. Yeah. During I'm, that time. I'm so pumped. <laughs> <laughs> I did notice you had a little creature stuff on your, uh, your demo roll. That was really cool too. Yeah. I think I got like a, there's a raptor in there and then there's a creature from the until you fall was sort of a quadruped. 
uh, type insect kind of creature. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was pretty cool. Yeah, I yeah. like that a lot. Yeah, because that's why it's like something I tell the students too. It wasn't until Jedi Challenges, which was, you know, 10 plus years that I did a sword, like a combat animation. Like mm. you get a studio where you're not doing shooting guns or, you know, reloading and a lot of the classic animations that you think about. Yeah. So that's like one of the big reasons too. Like I try to show some creature stuff or some acting stuff, or we do these brains, brainstorms to try to think of what's a game you've never even seen or hasn't been made yet. What are some animations they would need? Like start getting creative. Um, to, you know, cause that stuff will stand out on the real, right? You know, yeah. if, unique. if it's a polished shot and that, that's unique, you know, you'll remember it. <laughs> Definitely. That's killer. Well, Kyle, really appreciate your time. This has been fantastic. Um, you know, I have not got to meet you in person and it's just, I, I love these opportunities just to get to talk. And that's why I said, you know, at the beginning, uh, we keep these podcasts real conversational and this has been just nice opportunity to talk with you, pick your brain. Um, I know having now listened to you here for about an hour, your students are, are, are greatly privileged on this kind of stuff. And uh, we look forward to more future workshops with you here. Yeah, thank you. Thanks for having me. Killer, man. So much. All, All right. right. With that, guys, we're out.